your life will be one of intense activity and meditation, Yogananda told Kriyananda in 1950 when they were together at the Master's Desert Retreat. His story is one of discipleship above all. It is also a story of opposition, suffering, persecution, and the courage to face and overcome obstacle after obstacle before him. His story tells finally of the divine joy and freedom that come from giving oneself single-mindedly to God. Once after Swamiji had passed through a difficult period of testing, I said to him, I don't know if I would have had the strength to endure what you've had to go through in this lifetime. I didn't know that I had the strength, he quietly replied, and then added with deep conviction, but faith is my armor. Such has been the life of Swami Kriyananda. Swamiji's highest priority as a teacher was to try to hear the unspoken questions in people's minds and answer them. Before giving a lecture, he always meditated and inwardly asked his guru to help him understand what this particular audience needed to hear. Frequently, people told him afterwards that they had felt while listening that he was speaking to them alone, answering their special needs. My goal in teaching, Swamiji has often said, is to awaken in people their own sense of the divine truth. He always places people's personal needs ahead of any institutional consideration, believing that spiritual teaching should not be done with any hidden sectarian motive. Frequently, he tells his audiences, I don't want to convert you to anything but your own highest self. I've had two desires in life, Swamiji has said. The first is to find God. The second is to help others to find Him. This twofold ambition has kept him inwardly free from all lesser attachments. How can we understand the part he has played as a channel for his guru in the training of others? First, he would demonstrate by his own example. Next, he gave quiet support with covert supervision. And then finally, he encouraged them to go on alone. This is very much the way he has trained Ananda members in a great variety of their activities, in leadership, in spiritual teaching and counseling, in singing, writing, and most importantly, in discipleship and their inner search for God. Thus, he has given to others a sense of personal confidence in their own spiritual potential and in their own ability to achieve outwardly. In the last years of his life, people often ask me, has Swamiji changed since you first met him? No, I always say. What I experience now is what I felt from the first time I saw him. At the beginning, though, Swamiji kept a veil over his consciousness. If you tuned in, you could see behind the veil, especially when you looked into his eyes. See, he had a lot of work to do, and it served him to keep his consciousness a little bit hidden. In front of others, he kept his feelings in check and rarely referred to his inner state of consciousness. In the last years, though, when his great work was done, he just let the bliss flow. Merely to speak of Master brought him to tears. Often he spoke of his constant state of bliss. Because I write and speak so much about Swamiji, he allowed me to verify my perceptions of him. Once I asked him, May I say that you are the same as you have always been? The only thing that has changed is the way you express yourself? Yes, he said. 
You may say that because it's true. I have to say, it's a great satisfaction to me. Let me just speak personally for a moment. I spent so many years trying to serve Master, and to see you all here smiling, loving, blissful, happy, kind to each other, respectful of each other, these are all attitudes that I am so happy I'm, somebody asked me, what are you proudest of? I'm not proud of anything, but I have to say I am proud of you. So, thank you. <laughs>